What's going on, Knicks fans? The NBA draft is just around the corner. And every time I open up Twitter, I start to look for Knicks news and rumors. I keep on seeing Jade and Ivy being traded to the New York Knicks. So we'll talk about it on today's show. But I want you Knicks fans to voice your opinion in the comment section right now. Do you actually want the Knicks to trade up for Jade and Ivy? Type T for trade. Or if you're cool on Ivy, you can type P for pass. Welcome in to New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. And in today's show, we're going to talk about some NBA draft rumors to start the show. We'll break down, break down those Jade and Ivy trade rumors. And then on the tail end of the show, I saw a trade idea where the Knicks, they would get Christian Wood, the power forward center, three-point shooting big man from the Houston Rockets. And I thought it was a pretty interesting trade idea. So we'll talk about that later. But first, should the Knicks go ahead and trade up for Jade and Ivy? Right now, the Knicks, where they sit in the first round at the number 11 pick, Ivy's not going to be on the board unless, you know, some Laramie Tunsil gas mask picture leaks out and Ivy starts to slip down the draft boards. I mean, when you look at the type of player that Ivy is, he spent two years at Purdue, and he got better from his freshman year to his sophomore year. And you like to see that in a player to continue to get better every single year. And the thing that jumps off the page to me is he became a way more efficient basketball player while he was asked to do more, his freshman year averaged just 11 points per game, shot under 40% from the field, shot pretty bad from three at 25%. But he came back, worked hard, got his shot right, fixed some mechanics, and he ended up scoring 17 points per game, averaged uh, three assists, not really a big assist guy, we'll talk about that later, but shot 46% from the field and 36% from three, and his minutes went up seven minutes per game. And that's what you want. When a player is asked to do more, not only do you want him to do better, but you also want him to be more efficient. And that's what Jaden Ivey did. He proved this last year that he is a three-level bucket getter. He can get it done from beyond the arc. He can score in the mid-range. He can score around the basket, left hand, right hand. He's got a really nice floater, and he's got some really sneaky bunnies. If you're falling asleep on Ivy, he'll finish over the top of you. He reminds me of an all-star point guard that I'll give you my uh, NBA player comparison in a second. But Kevin O'Connor, who covers the NBA draft and the NBA for the ringer, he put out a player profile for Jaden Ivy, and I thought it was really good, so I'll read you guys what he had to say. Here are some pros that he had to say about Jaden Ivy. He said he's a dynamic shot creator out of his isolations and pick and rolls. He has one of the quickest first steps in the draft. He can use step backs or pull ups for jumpers. He makes 33.3% of his three pointers off the dribble, and he shot 35.5% on catch and shoot threes this season, according to Synergy. He's the most intoxicating on drives to the rim. He takes long strides and looks like he's gliding. Some athletic drivers are, are anxiety inducing, but Ivy is both calming and thrilling. He's an ambidextrous at the rim finisher who can score through contract, contact. He also has this leaning fadeaway and a floater that can sky over shot blockers. That's what I like about Jaden Ivy. Just because he's, he's extremely athletic, he can get to the rim, he doesn't always look to be playing at a full speed. He's very paced. He has that long stride, kind of like Luka Doncic, where he likes to catch the defenders off balance, and he can change his direction and step at any point because he's always playing under control. But he's not the perfect prospect. No prospect is ever perfect. He struggles a little bit on the defensive end. He also has shown flashes there. Kevin O'Connor, he also broke down some cons of the type of player Jaden Ivey is, and this is what he had to say. He said he often falls asleep on defense, losing track of his man. He stands there doing nothing a lot of the time, as if he's tired, apathetic, or both. He also struggled to shoot threes as a freshman, which we broke down earlier in the video. He went on to say, though his improvement seems to be for real, we have seen outlier shooting seasons in the past. He's streaky and had some poor shooting performances, such as a one for eight from three in the Big Ten Championship game. Look, everyone has bad games, but I've watched enough tape and everyone that has covered the NBA draft knows that Jaden Ivey is not the player that we saw his freshman year. He's closer to the player we saw his sophomore year, and he has an extremely high potential and high ceiling. He gives me Ja Morant vibes, and I seriously believe he has that type of potential. Not a true point guard that's going to dish out 10 assists per game while John Moran is continuing to get better on that end. I believe Jaden Ivey will do the same as he's asked to be more of a floor general and someone that can dominate the ball and get others involved and work more in the pick and roll. I think his assist numbers will go up and I honestly think he's the perfect type of point guard for a Tom Thibodeau offense. How many times have we just seen it? 
And we know, as Knicks fans, and if you're a Bulls fan like my producer, Matthew Peterson, there's not much actual offensive scheme or strategy for Tom Thibodeau. Well, on the Bulls, it was roll the ball out, and it was Derrick Rose, go get a bucket and get people involved. Last year and the year before, it was Julius Randle, ISO on the elbow, and get it done. And Ivy fits that mold. He can score in the isolation. He can score at all three levels. And that's why I think he's the perfect prospect for the New York Knicks. The thing is, he's just projected to go a little bit too high from where they're picking. So what about this trade idea from fanside? Shout out to them. I thought this was really interesting and thought-provoking. The Knicks, they would receive Alex Len and the fourth-round pick uh, fourth overall pick, excuse me, from the Sacramento Kings, while the Portland Trailblazers would receive Julius Randle and the Knicks pick, and the Kings would receive Josh Hart and the Trailblazers' number seven pick in the NBA draft. When I think about this, the Knicks, they get the worst player in the deal, but they get the best player. Julius Randle is the best player in the deal, and the Blazers get the worst pick, while Josh Hart is going to be an immediate impact player for the Kings, and they only have to move down three spots. This is really intriguing. I'll give you my thoughts in a second, but I want to take the pulse of all Knicks fans watching this video right now. Would you make this trade if you're the New York Knicks? I wouldn't pull the trigger until I saw who was pick number third, and if Jade and Ivy was still on the board, I think I'd have to make this deal. But let me know where you think. Type A for accept if you'd make this deal, or if you're Leon Rose and you're not really sure if you want to move up and get rid of Julius Randle, that's cool. I understand that for sure. You can go ahead and type D for decline. One thing I can promise you, though, if something happens regarding the Knicks, they make a trade, or they sign someone in free agency, or they move up in the NBA draft, we are going to be covering it right here on this channel, youtube.com slash Knicks TV. Look, daily free videos around the latest Knicks news and rumors. We're going to cover the hell out of the NBA draft. We're also going to cover free agency like no other channel on YouTube. I can promise you that. So go down right now, hit that big red button, lock us in as we try to get closer and closer to 7,000 subscribers. We're just under, under 600 away. So if you haven't yet, show some love to a fellow New York Knicks fan. Go down, hit that big red button right now. In a second, we'll break down another trade idea that I saw on the internet. And it's been linked a couple of times. It was linked back during the NBA season. And trade rumors have been surrounding Christian Wood, honestly, since he burst onto the scene with the, uh, with the Houston Rockets after being traded there. We'll break that down in a second. But I also want to remind you guys to subscribe to Chat Sports, our main Chat Sports channel at youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We just crossed over 300,000 subscribers over there. And we're going to be live for every pick of the NBA draft. My guy Chase Sr. and Harrison Graham will be breaking it down. I may pop on over there to talk about the New York Knicks and their pick. The draft, this uh, this next Thursday, June 23rd, of the link to youtube.com slash chatsportstv in the comments and description of this video. And my favorite thing about the way that we cover the draft is once the tweet is out or the tweet about the player is out from a, a Woj Bomb or uh, Sham Sharanya, we're going to go with it. We're not going to wait. We don't need to hear from Tim Legler and all the guys on ESPN. We get you guys the picks faster than any other network. So lock us in and join us as we party for the NBA draft, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. All right, we'll break down those Christian Wood trade rumors. I think this would be a good player for the Knicks to target, whether it's alongside a guy like Julius Randle if you keep him in the deal or if he's your Julius Randle replacement. Because what Christian Wood has done the last two seasons, he's let people know He's the real deal. I mean, last year he averaged 18 points and 10 rebounds while also shooting 50% from the field and shooting 39% from three. But there's other things that I like about this, his game, and it wasn't just a one-year wonder. When he got to the Houston Rockets after being traded by the Detroit Pistons, he had an even better season than he did in 2021 where he averaged 21 points per game, 9.6 rebounds, and he's also somewhat of a shot blocker. The last two seasons, he's averaged over a shot block per night. And this is the type of big that a lot of people want to add to their team. He's seven foot. He can rebound. He can switch on pick and rolls. He can defend multiple positions. But the best thing is he spaces the floor. And if you were to keep Julius Randle, you could play Wood and Randle together. I honestly think they'd be a great duo because we know Julius Randle wants to have those ISO situations where he likes to get downhill and finish at the rims. At the rim, excuse me. But how many times have we seen – Mitch, Mitchell Robinson's defender come over to the weak side, help off a Mitchell Robinson, and affect the shot of Julius Randle. If you were to have Christian Wood in those situations, the, space, the floor would be more space. You'd have Christian Wood in the short corner, or Julius Randle could just kick it to him and get a wide open three. 
But this trade idea came from NBA analysis, and they had the Knicks receiving Christian Wood and the veteran shooting guard Eric Gordon, who still got a little bit to his game. Actually had a pretty good year last year. He likes to shoot threes. He likes to shoot from distance, and he can get hot for sure. The Knicks, though, they would be giving up Mitchell Robinson in, in a sign-and-trade situation, Kemba Walker, Cam Reddish, and Alex Burke. The only Alec Burks, excuse me. The only player I would hate to see go in this deal is Cam Reddish. I also would hate to see Robinson go, but if it was a sign and trade, that would mean most likely he would want to be out. Let me know though, who do you think were to actually be the winners of this deal? Would it be the Knicks? Because they get to pair Christian Wood with Julius Randle and RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly? Or to be the Rockets, because they get Mitch, Mitch Robinson. It would suck to see him play for another team. I'm a big fan of Mitchell Robinson. Kemba Walker, he's pretty much in this deal to match the salary cap space of Wood and Eric Gordon. Christian uh, Cam Reddish, a little bit of sweetener. I like Reddish, but I think a lot of people are a little bit too high on him. And then Alec Burks, look, if he's gone, that means more minutes for the younger players. But let me know who wins this trade. Type NYK for the Knicks or HOU for the Houston Rockets. I would make this trade because Christian Wood, I believe, is just reaching the ceiling of the type of player he is. This is someone that can affect the game on offense and defense. And he would make the life for Julius Randle easier and also R.J. Barrett. An R.J. Barrett pick and roll or pick and pop with Christian Wood, that would be electric. A same, with, same with Emmanuel quickly. I think Christian Wood is the type of big man that a lot of people are looking for. He's not an elite defender, but he has enough foot speed and he's agile enough to switch out on guards in pick and roll situations. And another reason I would do this deal is because you get to keep your main core intact and you would have a starting five to go for a couple of years with a lot of youth movement still. Emmanuel quickly as your starting point guard, Evan Fournier as your two, RJ Barrett at the three, Julius Randle at the four, and Christian Wood at the five. You'd have Eric Gordon coming off the bench alongside uh, Quentin Grimes. You still have young players like Obi Toppin coming off the bench. Uh, Deuce McBride would be able to get minutes at the point guard. You still got Derrick Rose. So you keep the nucleus of this team while still building for the future. Christian Wood wouldn't be just a one-year rental type of player. I think he fits what the Knicks want to do, and he fits the modern day of the NBA. I appreciate everyone that's made New York Knicks now a part of their day today. If you haven't yet, show me some love. Give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green uh, underscore. As we get closer to NBA free agency and the NBA draft, Another way to stay up to date is by following me over there on Twitter. So the first 10 people that follow me from this video, I'll make sure to give you a follow back.